was a, what we would call today a domestic terrorist group. Why? Why, why would we call them domestic terrorist group? Because they tried to use fear and force to change political environment. And what was the motivation for the use of fear and force? It was based on race and ethnicity. Right. Are you aware of the perception of um, many about w how the, the, the power and the discretion at ICE is being used to enforce the laws? And do you see any parallels? I do not see any parallels between I'm talking about perception. officers and agents. I'm talking about perception. I, what is constitutionally mandated as it, as it relates to enforcing the law. Are you aware that there's a rights. perception? I see no Are you aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. Is that? I, no, I'm very specific about what I'm asking you. Are you aware of a perception that the way that the discretion I see to no I'm not finished. I see none. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. And intimidation, um, um, particularly among immigrants, and, and specifically among immigrants coming from Mexico and Central America. Are you aware of that perception? I, I do not see a parallel between the power and the authority that ICE has to do its job and the agents and officers who do it professionally and excellently with mm. lots of compassion. Sir, uh, how can you be the head? Here she signals openness to abolishing ICE on MSNBC just a few years ago. Go. Listen, I think there's no question that we've got to critically re-examine ICE and its role and the way that it is being administered and the work it is doing. And we need to probably think about starting from scratch because um, there's a lot that is wrong with the way that it's conducting itself and we need to deal with that. What do, what, what do you think should be the alternative to ICE? Well, we first of all, I don't think that the government should be in the ability, in the, in the, in the position of separating families. And um, that is clearly what is part of what's happening at, at ICE and DHS. So she doesn't believe the cross the border holding the hands of little boys and little girls. Right there on the spot, the Border Patrol and eventually ICE have to determine if that man, as an example, is in fact the father of those children or if he's kidnapped those children, if those children are going to be sold into sex slavery and other horrendous things. So they're separated to determine who is who. And as nice as it would be to pull up a computer and go into the software and check it out, it doesn't work that way, particularly when you have individuals coming from the Middle East or Far East Asia and so forth. And